Real Life Street Stars. We're here with Mama Snoop and Raheem. How we doing? How we doing? Hey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up? What's up? It's Mama Snoop in the building. Raheem.cmf. Check me out. <laughs> now, for those that sit at home, you know, we have a younger crowd as well. Um, for those that don't know who you are, um, by the name of Mama Snoop, uh, to speak on your son. For those at home that may not know who he is, uh, take this time out just to go to ahead and explain as far as who your son is to the world, to you, and let's go, let's start with that. Okay, well to me, of course, you know, that's my baby, so he was my only son. Um, his name is Darren Ross. Uh, to the world, he was known as Lil Snoop. So, you know, he was the 18-year-old rapper that was signed by Mika Smil, um, labeled Dream Chasers in 2013. Yeah, you know, a lot of people got introduced to um, your son when he got into a battle rap against uh, Deshaun, uh, Deshaun, the, for the guy from Deshaun Philadelphia, Jack. his artist, and yeah. um, he won the battle, and mm -hmm. he, he kind of took the world by storm, and then from there he started rising. Right. For you, did you see that in him early? Like, what, what were some of the signs that you said, my son is going to be great at this rap? Well, honestly, like, Snoop made me believe, so I can't say that I thought he would reach, you know, where he did. I can't say that, but I do know that he's been rapping his whole life. It was just some things, you know, life obstacles that he went through. And I remember telling him, like, Snoop, I don't care how good you can rap until you start changing your ways. God is not going to bless you. So I think once he started listening and taking heed to that and he started making those moves of just changing his life, then the doors just start opening for him just like without effort. You know, it's, it's crazy because mothers of young male rappers are either going to love it or hate it. Mm -hmm. either too much noise in the house or not um for you uh as far as the support system was it early on that you were supporting it or do you have to kind of grow into what he may what what he may become i can say like as a little kid you know maybe five to seven it was more so like go over there and rap and and write it down over you know get you a pad and write it down but once he started you know getting older um, he was a part of a group that, you know, they kicked him out of the group pretty much. And so I told him, hey, you know, you sound good by yourself. We can just start buying pieces of equipment and make a studio at the house if that's what you really want to do. I was just trying to keep him out of trouble. Um, there were some things I was fearful of him going to prison more than anything. It was just more so of keeping him out of jail and not following the footsteps, you know, of, of his dad. So that was my thing. Definitely. And um, I really want you to, you know, as far as, you know, his... His, his essence was cut short right. um, and for you of course you know I, I, I hate to have you relive the moment but if you don't mind as far as for those who were fans of his um, explain as far as for yourself you know getting the phone call finding out what's going on and just coming to realization of what happened with your son uh, getting shot well actually I didn't get a phone call somebody knocked on the door um, yeah there was a um, neighbor so someone we knew, you know, family back basically at home. So she knocked on the door and when I, I thought it was Snoop just based on how she knocked because he just knocked so hard. And I'm just like, who else will be knocking this time of morning? But when she knocked, she was just basically like, you know, you got to come quick. It's a bad call. They done killed your baby. But she was crying so hard as if, you know, Snoop was hers. So I was just I just lost every thought. I, I didn't have any clothes I couldn't my clothes were like sitting in front of my face but my mind when I registered to pick them up to put them on so then I even had to stop and get gas that you know right before going because where he was killed at was about 30 minutes away from Jonesboro so he wasn't actually killed in Jonesboro so it was just like that whole it just didn't seem real and I don't know what reason I did but I ended up calling James a uh, mix manager and he called me so we was just kind of like on three-way the whole time you know going down there and once I seen the lights, I think that's when I realized, like, hey, something really is going on. You know, at first it was just like, it can't be true because ain't nobody calling my phone. It's just like, this got to be a lie. But those lights made me know that something really is happening. So I happened to get to the scene with Snoop still laying on the ground before the police got there. Um, as far as putting the sheet on him and things like that, I got a chance to see him on the ground. So I just remember fighting with the police to try to get to him. And they were saying, like, basically, that was a crime scene that I couldn't. I couldn't get there and I remember going to the funeral home so I was made to walk to his body bag by myself you know and just kind of just examine him and it was just crazy because it really just wasn't no blood on him I just remember that as well so and who was like your closest support system for you at that time 
if it is. I don't know. It just got kind of crazy because yeah. the fame kind of messed up people's mind. Like they didn't, they wasn't looking at the fact that Denisha lost a Darren. It was like, man, we lost our meal ticket. We lost Lil Snoop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I got to ask, um, for you, I, I know that losing a child for any parent has got to be one of the toughest things. But when you saw the level of support worldwide that the love that your son received, how did that make you feel? Man, it was amazing. I remember um, telling my grandmother, I was like, you know, mama, usually when someone dies, people have their family members and their church family to pray for them. I'm like, we got the whole world praying for us. So that was just like great. And I felt it. I felt, I think that's where my strength came from and all that support because during the funeral uh, week, which is this week actually would be this week right here, I would be planning a funeral in 2013. And his funeral was June the 29th. So I would just seem like I was planning a celebration that I knew couldn't be messed up. So I didn't really have time to grieve because I was trying to protect Snoop from just being on the internet. Like it was just a lot of things I was just trying to protect him from. So I think the love from the world and the strength and the prayers really helped me get through that, that week. And, you know, I want to say, you know, and we're about to, of course, get into what, you know, what's going to happen next. Um, you've done a wonderful job, you know, as far as keeping his memory just alive and just everything that you're doing as far as us seeing you out here in Dallas and just moving around and talking to other mothers. Um, it was his birthday uh, that, yeah. that just passed, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. um, how is that as far as celebrating his birthday? What, what do you do as far as for maybe fans and family or what do you do for yourself to, uh, you know, sit down and, you know, just commemorate him? Well, usually um, we celebrate him in Jonesboro. This year I chose a more intimate celebration. And so um, I went to the beach and I lit a lantern up. It, and it happened to be was crazy because then everything is just in God's time. And so I had plans to kind of go live and release the lantern up at a certain time. But that didn't happen. The weather, you know, did not let that happen. So about the time that Snoop was pronounced dead, I was at the beach and the lantern that we tried, like about six lanterns that did not work. This one lantern went up at that time. Wow. So I just wow. experienced a, do, a new level of healing this year. And it was amazing. And I'm just in a peaceful place with that because I never thought that I would be able to experience what I am experiencing in my son's death. Like I was just such at peace and I was surrounded by real people that really loved Denisha. And it wasn't a mama snoop moment or a little snoop moment at all. No, there you go. And I'm glad you know, that even for you finding that, you know, that solemn to be able to say, you know, I'm feeling a lot more pressure off my chest. Definitely. Yes. Um, you are here with uh, Clear Motion Films, Raheem, and as far as what we've been even involved in, with, even with Real Life Productions, um, we've been seeing the making of a documentary for your son. Um, uh, it's been in the making for a while, and we've seen some, some big name people coming behind to speak on your son. Um, right. I want uh, for you both to give a chance to just speak on the documentary itself as far as the progression of it what's going you know the status of it and you know just your involvement and everything else yeah so you got to understand that i think it was uh 2015 yeah. somewhere around there or it might have been 2014 but 2015 yeah. denisha said that she wanted to make a documentary about her son not about little snoop about her son mm -hmm. and uh i told her we're not ready for that right now as far as my production we weren't able to do that but around 2016, I was able to link up with Key Black Films with Mike Frost. And from there, we collaborated and we were able to actually put this into a reality, independent. Denisha, me, and Frost. We went through there, brought Dominique in too, but and we, 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 we went brick by brick, mm -hmm. climbing the a staircase like 100 stairs up with everybody. Like 97 interviews over the, over the years, uh, uh, multiple top tier artists, uh, people and, and government officials. Uh, uh, legal people, other artists, all that. Like this, the documentary is not about a rapper. It's not about no, no. Uh, it's not a black film. It's not a white film. It's a film about a child who was murdered seven days after their 18th birthday, and and this this mother here becoming the victim, but becoming the hero to other mothers, and 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 trying to push his legacy forward. And his 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 uh, murder is still unsolved. Right on paper as I saw. So I, I, I had a question for you, um, for both of you. What Did you learn anything about Lil Snoop that you didn't? Obviously you probably did because you, you know, you're into it. But did you, Nisha, learn something about your son that you had no idea? 
I learned a lot about him. I'm sure. I'm I mean, sure. a lot about him. I learned some freaky hold stuff on, about on, him. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not going to tell you everything. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Gotta, they still got to check the documentary. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, coming out very soon. But, but, no, okay. but, but, I do want to ask who did you learn something that was kind of wild from? Who was it? Was it a, a cousin? A Just both. Even, <laughs> actually, let me tell you what's important. Okay, so what's important is that I learned that. You know, my cousins knew this dude yes. was going to try to get his uh, go to Philly on me. Like, oh, they knew see, that. See. But nobody told me this, so now they want to tell me their story. And they was telling Snoop, like, you better not try that. It's not going to work. So when they woke up to see that he actually made it there, they was like, this boy really went and did what he said he was going to do. Because they just tried to discourage him the whole time. Like, man, you can't go pulling up on that man like that. You better not. And Snoop did it anyway. So I learned those stories in the back Hold end on. of that. 36 hours on the bus. Man. by himself right that's when you say when you say dream chaser right that's literally the definition Man. of a dream chaser the real one what did, what did you learn oh right i learned a lot i learned a lot because see i didn't i i, I wasn't fortunate enough to meet little snoop in person i had to go through his mother and his whole family and friends to understand who he was and feel close about it i had to sit there at the graveyard and look at his grave at his uh the vault Yes, at the vault and, and read the words on there and say I'm gonna I'm do my best to make this thing a reality you know me and Frost sitting there in the in the, in the muddy rain and everything it was crazy <laughs> yeah. the first day we shot I mean it was a, it was a birthday celebration 21 right oh, I, think, I think so and yeah. um and it was like everybody was there it was a storm going on it was crazy but we went over there we stayed up the night before and made it happen but I learned like crazy thing I'll give you a little bit like like Denisha was at the funeral when she realized that Meek did not send for Snoop. He showed up there and made it all happen. Hmm. She was under the impression that Snoop was uh, getting a, a record deal or whatever and Meek Mill is sending send for him. That's why he was on the bus. She couldn't put that together. But that, I, but, That's what I was talking about. Yeah. I mean, he ran a lot of game. And so because he said it, my mom used to say, Snoop got you wrapped around his finger. I'm just thinking, why well, lie about something like that? He had to have sent for him if you got your mixtape to him and make sense. He tweeted about you. But I was just like, why well, bus ticket? But whatever. OK. So, yeah. <laughs> and what are some notable names uh, that will be appearing in the documentary um, that you don't mind letting the world know? OK, fine. All right. So <laughs> Currency, T.I., Rick Ross, Boosie. Meek Mill. Uh, Trade the Truth. Trade the Truth. See, I know she's going to hit it right there like that. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people on there. So, uh, his mother. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> I mean, you know. Mayor. Yeah, the mayor. My family. I have some family members. His friends. Her mother. Yeah. Producers. Um, Bebe. Yep. Bebe. Oh, Bebe, for sure. Bebe, for sure. I mean, Bebe, for sure. I can't really think. I've been yeah, kind of yeah, sick yeah, though, yeah, but no, yeah. Bebe. There's a lot of people, though. So what, what do you want people to take from this documentary? Like, what do you want people to walk away and say, Lil Snoop, your, and I'm okay. sure that's not his real name, but what do you want people to take away from this? So you get what you want, and then I'll tell what I want from Okay, it. cool. So what I want, what my whole principle is that, that a person can walk this earth and chase after their dreams unlike anybody else. Can't nobody stop a force that's just going forward, right? And after that, even after that, the same individual is going to inspire other people to do other things beyond what's happening right now. So like the dream chasing effect is beyond just right now. And then on top of that, that even through his mother, she is constantly still doing more for other people. And it's like unstoppable force that has been started from back then and still continuing to proceed. Go ahead. Dimitri. So from the film perspective, you know, I want people to be inspired. Like I don't want them to leave there and feel like no matter where they are in life, they can't pick themselves up and still accomplish what it is that their goal started off be. Because sometimes, you know, life's obstacles will happen and you'll just feel defeated where you'll just stop and you'll get off track. So I want them to watch this film and realize that, hey, it doesn't matter where you come from. It don't matter, you know, what you've done in life. You still can rearrange that and be someone and make an impact on life. So I want this film to be the most inspiring film out, you know, really. As far as a release, um, are we looking at... Uh possibly 2021 2022 are we still uh, yeah we're still here in 2021 we have multiple offers right now we have mo we're still accepting more offers we have a screening that's happening in dallas in october so there's a, more information to follow on the on the dream chaser that's the website facebook the dream chaser film 
and stay connected to Mama Snoop. Yeah, we definitely, uh, you know, there's a trailer that exists, so therefore we want people to see the trailer. And uh, Mama Snoop, I definitely want, you know, you to touch on real quick because, you know, you are advocating for other mothers who lost their children to gun violence um, of just, you know, maybe them getting in contact with you or getting in contact with the movement. Uh, of course, we've seen you with the OGU movement and there are a lot of, a, lot of, a few others. Um, just as far as your position in that and just, you know, being able to, to reach out to you. I know you have spoken to other mothers. Uh, there are other mothers that need that, you know, possible consultation and see, you know, how you got through it. Um, how can they either get with you or those who you are with uh, to just have these discussions? Right now, the best form of contact would be my Instagram, which is mandatorily, or you can email me at snoop4corners.com and just kind of inbox me or give me you know, an email or just someone. If you know someone that knows me, then we can set that connection up. I'm free to accept those type of things as well. And uh, as far as for the film itself uh, in clear motion, um, you know, of course, on your on the production end, uh, for those that other you know people that have stories to tell and need you know to be able to reach out to someone and just see where to start. As you said, it was just you and y'all three mm -hmm. figuring out where do we go from here. Uh, how can they get in touch with as far as you and the production crew? Yeah, so I'm Raheem.cmf on Instagram. I'm Clear Motion Films. We got Frost at Key Black Films. He's uh, Key Black Films. Frost for Key Black Films on Instagram. So that's it. I mean, we here for y'all. They family, man. We'll get yeah. you. We'll get them. We'll get, we'll get you to them. We'll get you to them. We'll get you to them. Uh, you know, normally at this time we do ask, uh, you know, if y'all have any shout outs. But um, yeah, if y'all want to be able to, you know, as far as, you know, just shout out, let's do it, man. Well, I just need to shout out God because he is First just so real and he is just so First good to me for real. So mm -hmm. after that, I really just want to shout out everybody that's staying with the movement, that stay supporting me, that stay supporting the legacy of Lil Snoop, because it has been eight years. You know, his death date was just June 20th and Snoop is very much still alive. And I feel him everywhere I go. It was just ironic even being in New Orleans last weekend for his birthday. His favorite blues song came on with a radio uh, I mean, a bicycle group was just sitting there and I, it was his birthday. And so I listened to the song just so happened. I'm like, wow, he is just still, you know, very much alive. So everybody that's supporting the movement, like I salute everybody that salute me, you know, and salute the movement and the team because I'm building up a real army. And I know that right now it's, it's, it's the season. Like Snoop said, it's takeover. It's the takeover season and I'm ready to do that. There you go. There you go. The Dream Chaser Film dot com. There you have it, man. Mama Snoop, I definitely do thank you uh, for coming out again. Uh, Rest in peace, rest in love, Lil Snoop. Uh, we can't wait to be a part of what's going to happen next and keeping his memory alive and keeping the name alive. And, you know, hopefully his story and his journey will inspire so many and countless others. Right. And you get to see the fruits of his labor exactly. going on, going forward. But there's no need to say it, man. You know, you are a real life street star. We salute you for coming through. All right, thank, thank you. you. Shout out real street stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.